Right. So in the next set of videos, we are going to talk about simulation, ways that we can approximate using code things from the real world. And there's so much that we could talk about. We're only going to scratch the surface, but I think a good place to start is a bouncing ball, something really simple, something that we know from everyday life um, and that we can see we can actually accomplish in a really believable way with just a couple of lines of code. Um, so I think a good place to start is to just get a ball on screen so that we can see it. And um, for that, we need a couple of variables. We need an X and a Y position, which I'm gonna create in setup. And then um, we need a speed variable. This is gonna be how quickly the ball moves. And for now, I'm gonna set this to 10. Um, in a little bit, we'll see how that we can um, make this work in a more believable way. Um, so then in setup, I'm gonna set my positions based on the size of the screen um, and my Y. Let's just start it a little bit above the top. And, oh, I think we also probably want a diameter variable for our ball. So let's then set the Y position to be the diameter times two, just a little bit below. We can then um, draw our ball this and we'll draw it at x and y using the diameter and then we should see it here cool looks good uh, of course it's not moving so then in our draw here we can change its y position using speed and we could do that by just adding speed to that y variable um, of course this does not do quite what we want um, <laughs> it doesn't bounce it just continues through the floor uh, and down into the center of the earth um, so the next thing that we need to add here is some way for the ball to reverse um, its direction when it hits the bottom of the screen. And um, to do that, we're going to use an if statement. And we're going to do this a lot through um, the next couple of projects here. So um, if you want to pause for a second and try to guess what that if statement would look like, that would be a really good way to kind of like uh, get your brain going for this process. Uh, but so we want to know if the y position, um, and we want to not just have the y because I brought I brought a visual aid here. This is my one of my dog's balls. Um, so it's a little dirty, sorry. Uh, but since the circle is drawn from the center, that's the Y position. I want to know if the bottom edge is hitting, not like this. Otherwise, that looks kind of weird. So I'm going to do Y plus diameter divided by two. So the bottom edge. If that's greater than the height, then let's just reverse the speed. And we can do that by multiplying it by negative one. And let's try this. And we see it bounces, which looks great. Uh, but of course, then it just, we have the opposite problem. It just keeps going forever and ever up into outer space. Also not what we're after. Um, so I think the next step then is to add a few other variables up here to help us control how this works. So the first thing that we want to have is a gravity variable. And uh, gravity is the force that's pulling this thing downwards towards the ground. And I've picked 0.5 from some testing, you can experiment with these values and see how they change. Um, you could even look up values to see, um, you know, maybe you want to do Mars gravity or something like that. And then um, we also want to have a bounciness variable. And this is going to be uh, sort of the opposite of gravity. This is the bouncy force when it hits the bottom and how far it sort of sends it upwards. And then uh, we want our speed actually to start at zero. And the reason for this is um, you imagine if I'm holding a ball up here um, and I let go of it, the ball starts at um, no speed. It's not moving, it's still. And then gravity slowly starts to pull on it harder and harder. So it goes faster and faster towards the bottom. So our speed is gonna start at zero. And then um, instead of just adding, so when we add speed to Y here, it begins moving instantly. It's moving at full speed, which is not very realistic. Um, so instead, what we can do is say, each frame, I wanna increase the speed by the pull of gravity. So um, the speed here um, then gets quicker and quicker, the longer it's falling. And then I'm gonna add, the speed to the Y position. So now um, it's gonna start moving slowly and then quickly speed up until it hits the bottom. So now if we run this, we'll see it bounces and it eventually um, sort of is going to come to rest um, because our speed is um, being changed by this gravity variable over time. But we can't right now very easily control this. We're just reversing the speed each time. Um, so instead what we can do is um, instead of multiplying it by negative one, we can multiply it by negative bounciness. 
And this allows us, first of all, to control this value to get it to work exactly the way we want. And we'll see in a second, if we're patient enough, that the ball is going to do something funky. Um, maybe we can wait for it. Here we go. <laughs> it's eventually going to slow down, which is normal. But you can see now it's doing the shake, and it sort of like oozes through the bottom. Definitely not what we want. Um, and the reason for this has to do with the speed. If we're moving um, by more than one pixel, it may kind of get caught in this weird trap um, below between the edge of the screen where it doesn't really know what to do or it just sort of like freaks out. Um, so instead, when it hits the bottom, I'm going to also add this line that resets the Y position. So again, it's sitting right on the bottom edge of the screen. So I'm going to say Y equals height minus diameter by two, so the bottom edge touches. And now if we run this, we can see it doesn't bounce quite as high. It won't bounce as many times because this bounciness variable is smaller. And eventually it comes to rest, and it looks really nice. So that And that's it. That's it. That's a bouncing ball. Um, we can certainly try changing these variables and see how they affect it. So this is maybe more like a bowling ball, or I don't know if we do bouncingness greater than one. I think we might. Yeah, so bouncing this greater than one is going to shoot it off. That's not what we want. Um, we could try it even lower. Yeah, so playing with these variables can be really fun, and we can see some different results. Um, we could also add one more thing. Maybe we want to be able to reset the simulation. So I can use key press for that. And you could tie this to a particular key, but I'm just going to um, make it any key. And when the key is pressed, it's going to call setup. That's going to reset our x and y variables. Um, and this is also going to be something you may want to do with your projects so that you can quickly rerun it um, and think about where you can kind of reset those values. So now if I hit the space bar or whatever, it's going to reset and rerun. Cool. So we could stop there. And this works totally fine. But let's add, or let's think about doing this in a different way. For example, if I wanted my ball to also move to the right and bounce off the wall and stuff like that, um, keeping track of an x and a y variable, a speed x, a speed y, all of this stuff, it's going to start to get kind of messy. Um, and in some later examples, we'll also see that the math gets kind of funky. Um, so instead, what we can do is convert some of these variables to um, a vector. And a vector is um, a mathematical object that contains either a two-dimensional point or three-dimensional. Um, so x and y, or x, y, and z being depth. Um, and the vector allows us to both kind of store those values. So for example, instead of x and y here, I can create a variable called position. And actually, we're going to set this here in setup. So we can do that. We can say position equals create vector and that's our x and our y, like that. And now position contains those two values. It's got both those um, positions all in one place. This is great. Um, and then we'll see later, too, that there's, yeah, there's some like fancy math that we can do with vectors that are just more difficult otherwise. So it can be a position. It can also be uh, forces, speeds, and things like that. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and redefine um, speed and gravity, so we can delete this. We are going to leave bounciness as a, um, a regular number, and we'll come back to why that is in a minute. Um, so my position is equal to uh, this, same as before. Gravity, we can do the same, create vector. Um, now, I want gravity, remember it's x and y, so I don't have any lateral gravity. Gravity doesn't really work that way. So gravity is going to be 0 in the x and we'll make it 0.5 in the y. And then speed is going to be um, equal to 3 in the x direction. Actually, for now, let's just make it the same as before, uh, 0 and 0. So it's, it's both zeros, but then we'll also be able to change those values over time. And then in our draw, we can replace some of these things um, that we had before. So we'll just leave these here for now. I can say speed.add gravity. And this works the same way as this, but instead um, it's adding the two vectors together. So it adds the x values to each other and it adds the y values to each other. And now the value speed has been changed. So we add gravity to speed here. And then we can also 
say position.add speed. So this accomplishes exactly the same thing. We can actually maybe just put this over here so we can see it. So that's exactly the same thing, which is pretty cool. Um, we do then need to change this a little bit. We can't, we don't have a Y variable anymore, but we can access the Y variable from the position. So I can say position.y, if that's greater than the height, then we would say position.y equals that. And then um, we can't multiply these um, together here, um, but we can say speed.y times equals negative bounciness. And we'll deal with the X in a minute. So let's run this, make sure this also works. Uh, nope, I screwed something up. Let's see. Um, position, boy, what did I mess up? Oh no. Um, okay, let's pause for a second and see. We can um, use console.log maybe to see what's going on with our speed. Um, so we can say console. I don't know about you, I find console.log to be the hardest thing in the world to type. Apparently everything today. And then we can open our console over here. Okay, let's see. Ah, we're getting an error. Um, oh, okay. So this is why maybe having the console open would be smart. Um, we also no longer, because we no longer have an X and a Y, we need to say position.x and position.y. Let's try that again. Yay, cool. And we can see our vector is changing as well. And this works the same way, which is what we want it to do. Cool. Um, now we can add another element. Let's make our ball also move in the X direction and we can make it bounce off the sides and stuff like that. Um, so let's see, what do we wanna change? Well, let's change our speed in the X direction to be three. So we can start it with some initial movement. Um, let's make our X position over here instead of in the center. Let's also make it diameter times two. That way we can um, start it kind of up in the corner. And um, let's just see now, cause we're gonna add, oh, right. So then we add the speed and remember speed is both in the X and the Y direction. So let's try this again. And now we can see it's moving over to the side. Of course, it's not gonna be able to bounce off of the wall on the side. It's sort of just moving across. Um, but let's go ahead and say, speed.x times equal bounciness over here. And we can try that. So this is gonna change the forward momentum by slowing it down every frame, um, which looks pretty good, right? Because the balls doesn't have sort of infinite movement side to side in the same way it's not gonna bounce forever. Um, so here we multiply the y position by negative bounciness. So it goes in the opposite direction and speed by the positive bounciness. And because that number is less than zero, it's gonna reduce the speed X every frame um, in this case by what 20%. If we were to make this negative, we would see it act kind of funky. It's gonna reverse. It's actually kind of cool, kind of like it has some spin or something. Um, and this is what I love about doing these simulation projects is that just changing one thing totally changes the behavior. And it's really fun to sort of experiment and see what happens. Often you're gonna get crazy results that aren't what you anticipated or hoped for, um, but it's still pretty fun. And that's, that's it for bouncing balls. Um, you can see here, really, we just sort of rethought through how we're defining these variables instead of being fixed numbers, they're being their vectors, which we can um, use to encode both position or forces like speed and gravity. Um, and then we can use the dot add. Um, there's other um, uh, mathematical operations that we can do on vectors. And we'll see some more of those um, in the coming videos.